I want to talk to you about this Williamson situation. I think this is beyond troubling. First of all, uh, and we've run at Consortium News, and you may have also at the Sabina Media, plenty of stories about a couple of months ago about the phoniness of this anti-Semitism charge against the Labour Party. It's clearly trumped up to destroy uh, Corbyn in particular, who uh, terrifies the establishment in Britain uh, and in the US uh, and elsewhere. If a Labour Party leader who's actually a Labour Party <laughs> member in the traditional sense of defending Labour um, becomes prime minister, that would make a lot of problems for the establishment. And we have discussed on this vigil before how one of the possible ways for Julian Assange to get out of that embassy is if uh, Corbyn does indeed become prime minister and allows him to leave. And uh, if he has that authority, make sure that this very minor charge of skipping bail on, uh, on an investigation that's since long been dropped from Sweden by Sweden. Uh, there were never any charges in that case. There are no charges as well uh, about skipping bail. There's simply uh, an arrest warrant. He's not been charged with skipping bail. That arrest warrant for that very minor charge that is totally irrelevant now um, could be dismissed perhaps by Corbyn if he came to power. But here we see his party allowing uh, this MP to be suspended and smeared again with this anti-Semitism charge, which I have no idea what has anything to do with the issue, which was he defended uh, and agrees with a United Nations panel's decision that they've reiterated that Assange is being held arbitrarily and he should be released and even compensated. It's saddening to see that that these types of trumped up allegations and smears can so successfully blacken someone's name um, when they can conven very conveniently when they've said something that is um, a completely uh, contrary to the establishment's narrative, whether that's about Assange or whether it's about the Integrity Initiative, which I believe he was also uh, vocal about as well. And that's another narrative that would be very inconvenient for the UK establishment, especially. We have a quote from a commenter saying, uh, quote, Chris Williamson was pushing for the Integrity Initiative to be the subject of a parliamentary inquiry. And so you can imagine that in addition to Chris Williamson's statements, you know, backing the UN um, and the UN's ruling on Assange, that that type of position would make, put you into the, the sort of position of being targeted by the establishment. The Integrity of Initiative was supposed to be a highly secret operation. And the, the really chilling part especially if you're a UK citizen, is that the government, the, de the defense ministry and the foreign office uh, and government money was poured into this operation. And one of their main uh, targets was Jeremy Corbyn. So you've got the sitting Tory government basically funding a secret operation to smear their political opponent using the official organs of the state this initiative was to draw in academics, journalists, and government officials and military officials to the integrity initiative linked again to that Atlantic Council, which is funded by NATO for, and, and others. It's um, an odious organization that has also been taken on by Facebook to help in their, what could only be called censorship of, uh, of Facebook for again, criticisms that the establishment does not like. The point I was gonna make is that the people who own the world and the Corbett media are terrified of both Jeremy Corbyn and Julian Assange, because if Corbyn becomes prime minister and Julian Assange is freed, it will not only be, well, it will be a, a big victory over their corporate media because they're throwing everything they've got and they don't have anything. They, they don't have anything. So they, they here's, here's an example of, of one of these headlines. Biographer claims Labor's Jeremy Corbyn is a Trotskyite who eats beans from the can and wants Brexit to fail. I mean, that, is a Trotskyite who eats beans from a can? That sounds like something The Onion should have published. Yes. Um, Oh, here's another one. <laughs> this is about this uh, Tim Dawson has written an unauthorized biography of Corbin. It's called Dangerous Hero. And 
first this, this business about, about eating beans out of a can was in the Washington Post. <laughs> and it was an interview with the author. And then the author has a piece he wrote himself, I think it was in the Telegraph. Um, and the headline is, you should never trust someone who doesn't read books. Just look at Jeremy Corbyn. And what he's saying is he won't suffer any repercussions from what he wrote in this because Jeremy Corbyn doesn't read books. Insane. Absolutely and then, insane. And then those are the three, three top headlines. And then was, the third was Jeremy Corbyn's anti-Semitic labor party. I, I think that the, the point about the Jeremy Corbyn is that he has shown himself to be extraordinarily ineffectual. I mean, I, I am uh, absolutely astonished how he hasn't been able to sweep away the ridiculous anti-Semitic uh, canard to which he has been subjected. I mean, it's obviously so ludicrous. This person who has been um, a kind of a leading figure on the uh, political left in the UK since the early 1980s, he has been a fighter against racism, against bigotry, against prejudice. I mean, this is a man, you can't get more politically correct and anti-racist and against anti any kind of um, uh, discrimination than Jeremy Corbyn. And yet he's been uh, apologetic and, 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 and allowed himself to be typecast in this uh, absurd way. So I'm frankly just not surprised that he hasn't... Um, done more, which he, when he easily could, um, on, um, on, on Julian Assange. And, um, you know, he has this advisor, Seamus Milne, who is also um, very friendly with Jen uh, Robinson, who is um, Julian Assange's attorney. So therefore, Seamus Milne, who's obviously very close to Corbyn, would undoubtedly be telling Corbyn, hey, look, I mean, you know what the hell's going on here. This is absolutely outrageous that, uh, he's, that he's being in prison. Um, yet Corbyn is just uh, very timid and, you know, the sad thing is that, you know, we're looking at a failure, that a man who will ultimately not get the ultimate prize in, uh, in British politics, he will not become prime minister. He has shown himself to be too weak and too um, ineffectual, too timid to seize the, uh, the ultimate prize. And so we may not get any real progress on um, Julian Assange through Jeremy Corbyn, I had hoped that this would be the best way of um, get, getting Julian out of that uh, embassy. Once Corbyn is prime minister, you know, first thing he does, you know, pack him on a plane, you know, straight back to Australia. But I, I now have serious doubts that he will ever be prime minister. You know, in politics, cowardice is rarely rewarded, but it's never rewarded. So 